I'm Gavin Hoey and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that has everything for us photographers, and you're watching another 15 minute photo challenge. Adorama TV presents Take and Make Great Photography with Gavin Hoey, where you'll learn how to take stunning photos and then polish them in post-production. So you can join me here in, well, New York. I'm in New York and we're going to spend 15 minutes wandering around this little small area to see what photos we can take. Behind me is the flat iron building and hopefully we'll find some good shots of that and the park across the way here. So let's get going. Okay, so for my first shot, well, I've got to do the, the clock here. It, it says everything about the place. Fifth Avenue building, we're going to have the, the flat iron behind it. Okay, let's come in here. I'm going to do a reasonably tight close shot, I think, as well, because, well, I think it just looks good. So there is a bit of a problem with the, the lampshade coming through, the, the street light, but there's not a lot I can do about that. It's just, just there, isn't it? So we'll have to live with that. But what I will do is try and make sure the clock is between the two buildings. So it fills that gap in the sky. Good, but I reckon there's a really good wide shot in here as well. So let's just come down a little bit lower and we'll get a wide shot. Now, looking at the back of the camera, I can see that it looks a little bit shadowy on the clock, but there's not a lot I can do about that. That's something we'll have to try and fix in Photoshop. And as we have only got 15 minutes, uh, let's go on and take some more pictures. Okay, so I think there is a pano here, just to, to really establish the scene, just to give you a feel of how how much there is here to take in, it's incredible. So let's just grab my camera. Now, panos, if you want to see really detailed information on how to shoot panoramas, go check out Adorama TV's Learning Center. Go check out my very first video, no, my second video, video 102, where I do panos in more detail. But for a very quick overview, I'm just going to start in aperture priority mode. I'm going to choose F8 as my aperture, and I'm going to take a meter reading, which is telling me a 200th of a second ISO 200, F8. I'll dial those numbers in to manual so all of my pano shots have the same settings. Turn my camera on aside so I'm in portrait format and away we go. So it doesn't matter whether you start left or right, but the first picture, picture of my hand, so I know that's the beginning of my pano. And around we go. One, two, three, four, five, Six, wait for the lorry to go through. Seven, there we go. Okay, so there's my little pano, and I'll stitch that together in Photoshop, and we should have a much more dynamic shot with that huge 180 degree field of view. Random shot, but uh, just very New York. <laughs> well, it's a bit of a cliche, but one thing you notice when you're in New York is the sheer number of yellow cabs. Well, sort of orangey yellow cabs. I've got to get a picture of those. And I think just over here is where I'm going to do it. Don't forget to check out Adorama's latest contest and your chance to win amazing prizes. So we've got cars, taxis whizzing past me, cabs whizzing past me all the time. Let's get a shot. Now, first of all, I need to come out a manual and back into aperture priority mode. So I'm going to choose a setting that's going to give me a shutter speed that's going to give that motion. In fact, I'm going to work in shutter priority mode. So on my Canon 60D, that's the TV setting. And I'm going to dial down my shutter speed to well, I don't know. I'm, I'm guessing about a 30th of a second should give me some motion blur because I want these cabs to be slightly blurred to give that feeling of terror that you're about to get run over because that's what I've got every time I've stepped into the road since I've been here. Okay, so let's just take a quick shot. There we go. So. Okay, brilliant, so we've got a couple of great shots there. Let's go find somewhere else to take some more pictures before we run out of time. 
So we've just come across to the park right across from the Flatiron building and there's all sorts of great little shots in here, some, some people, some objects, but these things, these have really caught my eye and they're a little bit of, well actually I don't know what they are. Everybody seems to be looking underneath, so I'm gonna just have a little sneaky look under there and see if there's a good photo. You can't see what I can see, but if you could see, if you could see this, you'd, you'd be grabbing your camera and you'll be taking exactly the same shot that I'm gonna take, which is a brilliant self-portrait. Well, it's a self-portrait. That's, that's pretty, that's incredible. That's just great fun. So a couple of things I'm gonna look for here. I'm looking at a shot that seems to have a massive depth of field, so I'm gonna dial up my, my aperture to f8. It's one of those depth of field things where if you're not quite sure f8 is a great place to be, because it just generally doesn't matter. But f8 is giving me a shutter speed that's a little bit on the slow side. So I'm gonna increase my ISO to compensate all the way up to 800 ISO. 800 ISO, yeah, I mean, that, that looks, that just looks incredible. I really love that, that's great. Right, okay, so, well, time, time's running out. 15 minutes is pretty much done, and I'm no doubt gonna stay here for ages more taking a few pictures, but for this challenge, I want one more shot looking up Fifth Avenue, because as I look up there, I can see a rather tall building. Here's the Empire State Building, and I've gotta get a picture of that. It's just one of those pictures you've gotta do. Um, and I've gotta do this without getting run over by cabs. Mm -hmm. Wish me luck, here we go. Uh, oh, look, oh, there's a gap in the traffic. Gap in the traffic. I'll be honest, it's not my best picture, but I'm a tourist and I'm enjoying myself here. It's one of those must-have shots. And that's one of my little memories from New York. But when you look a little bit closer, sometimes you see things that the touristy shot you miss. So I'm just gonna go in a little bit closer. I'm gonna go with a nice, wide aperture, so F4. And I'm gonna get this shot. There we go. Bet you didn't see that one. So there we go, 15 minutes have come and gone. I'm still in one piece and I haven't been run over, which is fabulous. But what we've got to do now is to get these pictures back onto my computer and we'll see what we can do with them inside of Photoshop. And we're gonna do that right now. Well, it was absolutely freezing in New York, so I'm back in my office and warming up quite nicely, and I've had a chance to look at the pictures. The one I wanna edit is the first shot. It's a great raw file with bags of potential. It's the picture of the clock with Fifth Avenue and the, the flat iron building behind. And I'm gonna start by deliberately underexposing the image. Now, if I'd have done this to the picture in camera, if I'd have deliberately or accidentally underexposed the image, I'd have looked at it and thought, I've messed that one up. And technically I have, but we're gonna use RAW to really maximize the potential in the picture. We're gonna push this as far as I'm comfortable to take the RAW file, which is possibly a little bit too far for some people, but that's okay, it's my picture. So what I'm gonna do next is to say, okay, more highlight detail please by reducing the highlights but then open up the shadows by increasing the shadow slider so I get something out of those shadows too. It's a little bit underexposed, there's a bit of a hint of a gap there on the, the histogram, so let's just bring up the whites just to fill in that end. Now, obviously this picture needs clarity, I say obviously, I do use clarity a lot, but this picture's got some great texture and that's what clarity really picks up on. Now, color. This picture could work as a black and white, I think, or it could work as a color image. And in fact, if I increase my saturation, the colors really hold up well. So another nice little tip is if your, your saturation can go really high and you don't fall down, then you can sort out your colors and just mute them back a little bit by pulling back the vibrance like so. Now, if you choose to go down the color route or down the black and white route, and you want to find out more about how to do black and white work, then check out the Adorama Learning Center for some brilliant tips and techniques on shooting in black and white and editing your pictures in black and white. Okay, now I like that. I like the hint of color, but also the hint of monochrome, but the monochrome gives me the ability to do a few things. For example, I can jump into split toning and I can split tone my image. And I'm gonna do it by adding 50 to the highlights, 
230 to the shadows. Let's start with the highlight color. I've chosen my color as a warm tone by adding 50, but the amount of warm tone is governed by the saturation slider. And you can see how it picks up on that black and white sky that we created by reducing the vibrance and puts a nice warmth into the, the highlights, the sky. Same with the shadows. When I increase the saturation on the shadows, we're putting some blue into the, the shadowy areas of the picture. And that's split toning, different tones in the highlights and the shadows. Okay, whilst we're here, we're gonna come into the effects as well and put a little bit of post-crop vignetting just to darken down the edges. Now that will make that center feel darker. Notice I said feel. It doesn't actually change the center, it just feels like it does. Well, one of the great things about the raw editor in Lightroom and in Photoshop is you don't have to make just global changes. That's changes to all of the picture equally. You can make local changes as well. So you can be much more selective about what you do to small parts of the picture. Now here in Photoshop, it's the adjustment brush. It's on the options bar along the top. So let's go grab that. And I'm gonna increase my exposure by about a stop. We'll make the brush a little bit bigger and we'll just paint an extra stop of light over the clock face because it was feeling a little bit dark and a little bit gloomy. Let's make the brush a bit smaller and I'll just tidy up and we'll, we'll put a little bit more light down here too. Now you don't have to stop there. You can have as many of these brushes as you like. So I'm gonna get another new brush and this time what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna increase the clarity and I'm also gonna increase the contrast and we're just gonna paint over the face of the clock and you'll see how that cuts through that haze and gives me a much clearer picture of the clock face. Finally, I'm also gonna add some temperature to that area just to warm it up a little bit so it's not a cold looking clock face, it has some warmth in there. And there you go, that's it. That's my final picture completed. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to click on the subscribe button to keep getting more videos from myself and the other amazing presenters here on Adorama TV. I'm Gavin Hoey, thanks for watching. Do you want great looking prints at low cost? Be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service. Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards, or albums, use adoramapix.com.